Hello viewers, it's James Com, your half-assed art reporter and we are back on Grand Street on the Lower East Side. We want to do a special shout out to our friends in Turkey, in both Ankara and Istanbul, and to our viewers in North Carolina. We're gonna run up to the Gavin Brown's Enterprise, 291 Grand Street. We're gonna take a little sto stroll through a two-person show titled Hell on Earth, featuring work by Janet Munt and Ned Venna. Well, I thought it'd be interesting to just Take a little stroll through the installation. Uh, interestingly, they've uh, installed a couple of temporary display walls at angles to the regular gallery walls here. Now, <laughs> I don't know whether that was because they wanted to uh, accentuate the, the divisions in the work or Just uh, play on some kind of uh, an architectural idea. I think we'll start out looking at the work of Janet Munt. This is titled Turn Again. 2017 oil on canvas, 24 by 20 inches. Well, I uh, came in a little earlier and walked through the show and uh, initially I was work looking at uh, Janet's work and thinking it looked like uh, spray paint. It almost looks like uh, somebody's nice uh, burner that you would see out on the streets of Chinatown. And then uh, I got a little closer and started looking at it and uh, realized that uh, this is actually a uh, pretty nice oil painting. This is titled Like a Wedding. 2017, 52 by 46 inches. Always get our fellow gallery goers in there. Bizarrely cool. Thirty-seven and a half by twenty-eight inches, and uh, and Janet has uh, made a shaped canvas here, and uh, yeah, I like her. Reduce palette and uh, she's got a very dry paint surface. I think there is a kind of a uh, maybe that's intentional, kind of an Asian feel to some of this. It's titled Same. Well, I'm looking at this initially and just thinking it's an abstraction, but as I started to uh, spend a little time looking at it, I realized that it's a uh, detail of an eye that's been blown up, worked over, erased, repainted. And I like this uh, the formalistic division of the canvas with the uh, right hand is a, kind of a flesh-colored rectangle.
where he immediately dies. It's another uh, blow up of an eye. But this is as punchy as someone's uh, graffiti tag. I like that red drop. Not more alone. Okay, so this looks like a blow up of a kind of a gothic illuminated manuscript, maybe. I don't know, is this uh, Christ with the crown of thorns? the colors of the Mexican flag. And a lot of these pieces have got these kinds of uh, broad strokes of paint that don't really uh, block out. They just kind of uh, scumble in a layer of color there. Okay, now this is where the uh, installation starts to become interesting because we're down at the, uh, the closed end of the, or the narrow end of these angles on the walls. I'm thinking maybe they were biting on uh, Michael Asher and his uh, Pomona College piece that he did in, I don't know when that was, 1972, something like that. titled The Last Time He Said That, 60 by 50. I'm kind of getting a, uh, an echo of some of the, uh, the Neue Wilden painters. I was thinking of uh, some of the pieces that Lupertz was doing back in the early mid 80s. Also, it's uh, challenging to uh, look at the paintings with the light coming through the window like this. I think this might be uh, my favorite piece by Janet here. This is titled Where He Seems Almost Immediately to Have Died, 2018, 52 by 46 inches. Well, I like her kind of tertiary uh, greens and uh, kind of sickly yellows and uh, pale pinks. And I think the, the soft edge that she gets on these, these dark lines is what made me think this was spray paint, but uh, this is all brushed in.
We got one more by Janet we're gonna look at. <laughs> this one is simply titled Jeanette Mund, 2018 oil and canvas, 30 inches. It's a Tondo. And aside from the interesting subject matter, this little form right here is actually the most uh, intently painted and uh, kind of zippy part of the composition. It's a very interesting negative space. Okay, stay f stay with me, friends. <laughs> We're gonna continue on with a little stroll through the show by Ned Venna. Hell on Earth, 2018. UV cured ink and acrylic on canvas, 58, 84 by 58 inches. Well. I was wondering uh, why they would show these artists together and uh, aside from the fact that they're kind of doing I guess what would generally be called uh, abstraction based on realism writ based on some kind of images but now I see that Ned's also using blow-ups of eyes and faces. Okay, I think the interesting thing I think also is there is some um, some kind of digital printing being involved here. Looks like he uh, blows up some fragments of images has them printed onto the canvases and then uh, sometimes overprints them and then paints on top of that. I think one of the interesting things about what we've been looking at in the last couple of months is that uh, we've seen a lot of people and there seems to be a certain amount of uh, critical reception, critical interest in a lot of this digitally printed or silk screened or photographically printed images that have been combined or printed on canvas combined with painting. We saw James Hyde oh, a couple weeks ago, Wade Guyton, uh, maybe six months ago we went and saw Richard Prince show where he took old cartoons from Playboy magazine and poured gouache on them, let them dry overnight, and then photographed them, and then printed them on large canvases. This is titled Hell on Earth 2. I like this one. Hell on Earth 3. UV cured ink and acrylic on canvas. 84 by 58, so these are about seven by five feet. Well, so like the Wade Guyton prints, you can sort of see the striations from the irregularity in the uh, printing process. And it looks like he's overlaid sections of this with the printer and then uh, gee I don't know maybe the uh, maybe you're printing the drips oh that could be one of the interesting possibilities of this kind of approach it's all printed and it, you're just faking the the strokes, or maybe 
you're doing your strokes to imitate the digital print. Hell on Earth 4. And again, that could be a uh, huge blow up of something else like an eye. So we've got Hell on Earth 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. And again, we've got uh, what looks like a uh, vertical division that must have been where the edge of the digitally printed image was. So I'm thinking maybe he uh, does a little printing, takes it out, puts some uh, drippy uh, rectangles of paint on there or maybe even just sloshes some solvent on there and uh, gets some drips then runs back in and prints on top of that. Okay, so that looks like a blown up eye, right? The other thing I'm thinking is uh, there's a long formalist history of this kind of uh, division of space. It's pixelation there. And uh, yeah, I think uh, Ed Reinhardt, even with his black paintings, they were actually divided into nine squares. number seven. So it's interesting, there's kind of a dichotomy of, of influences happening now in the New York painting. One of them would be this branch, kind of the flat, photo-derived, very smooth type of painting. A lot of times this is also dealing with various ideas about images and the syntax of photography, the media. And then the other side to that would be the material painters like we looked at last week. Dennis Hollingsworth. Uh, Al Held. Milton Resnick. Well, that could be a blown up picture of a hand, maybe. There are various rectangles of imagery. Number nine, 2018. I think uh, Chris Dorland would also fit into the mechanically uh, produced, the photographically rendered images.
Yeah, also uh, this big uh, wide slushing strokes make me think of David Reed. And again, we are kind of down to the pinched area of space and <laughs> with these temporary walls. So I can only get about five feet away from this. This is number 10. Also, it's, uh, it's interesting to note that it seems that for the people that are using the photographic techniques, that it's very important for them somehow to uh, project or to maintain some kind of uh, painterly qualities. So in this case, Ned is making sure that his drips stay. Uh, Wade Guyton was taking lots of pictures of his studio and uh, various things that he was staining and, and restretching and uh, Richard Prince was using pools of gouache. So it's interesting to note that uh, it seems like the more they want to bring in some kind of mechanical way of producing the paintings that it's almost just as important for them to uh, pay homage to the actual painting. James Com reporting on Hell on Earth, Janet Mund and Ned Vina at Gavin Brown Enterprise. 91 Grand Street. You can like this, subscribe, and share. And you can leave your comments, criticisms, reviews, critiques, suggestions below. And as always, we say thank you, Kate. Bandits run? Is that uh, you guys? Bandits on the run. Bandits on the run. Yes. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Thank you.